Molly Lube. This is an industrial dry lubricant that's used in applications where you have metal parts slotting against each other, but you don't want to use grease. Molly is short for Molly Denim, the element, and this type of lubricant is in the same type of family as things like Teflon. Teflon is dry and allows objects to not stick to each other or reduce friction. So what does this have to do with laser engraving? Well, the ingredients in this can are very similar to Surmark, which if you don't know, is a laser marking compound that you apply to metal, and then you can make a dark permanent etch on a CO2 laser cutter. CO2 laser cutters cannot normally etch on metal, you need a fiber laser for that. But with a CO2 laser and a can of Surmark or Molly Denim Lube, you can etch on metal and get a dark permanent mark. So why would you use this instead of Surmark? Surmark is a great product, but a can about this size costs $80 or so, and this can costs between 15 and 20, depending on where you get it. From my experience, Surmark is better at the job, but if you don't need it to be a perfectly dark etch, this, this is perfectly adequate. Case in point, the project I'm working on today. My husband and I cook a lot and we use kitchen scales and we occasionally run into the situation where we forgot to tear the scale before placing the bowl on it and we wanna know what the weight is minus the bowl. So we need to know how much the bowl weighs. Now I could commit to memory that this bowl weighs 65 grams, but that's asking a lot. And it'd be much easier if I could just pick it up quick and look peek on the bottom and see that, oh, 65 grams. I'm not gonna use a can of $80 etching compound on something as silly as this, but a can of dry molly lube, perfect. Let me show you the process. From my experience, Molly Lube isn't quite as harsh and potent as spray paint, so you could probably get away spraying this indoors, but I like to use the portable spray booth that is my truck bed whenever I can. Other than not being overly harsh in the smell department, it sprays just like spray paint does. The Molly itself is mixed with a solvent and propellant that evaporates off the surface very soon after it's sprayed, leaving behind a thin layer of the Molly Denim we're interested in. This footage is real time, so you can see how fast the solvent evaporates and thus is ready to etch. This was actually the first time I worked with Molly Lube on my Thunder laser machine, so I needed to figure out what settings work best. When we got new silverware as a wedding present, I saved all of our old mismatched silverware to use for tests like this, so I dialed in my settings on the stainless steel butter knife since my bowls are stainless steel as well. In fact, I used the same can of dry Molly Lube to etch our cake cutting set with our names and wedding date six years ago. And that's a perfectly acceptable result, right? Like, if I used Surmark, this would be darker, but I was happy with it. I used a Brillo pad to scuff and try to remove it, and it, it stayed. It had staying power. But of course, I did the cake cutting set on the old Makerspace laser that I used before getting my own. So, back on my test knife, I did five different power settings at 400 millimeters per second. I ended up landing on 40% power as the one I thought looked best after washing the excess Molly Lube off. I'll show you how to do that later in the video. I did a quick little design in Illustrator to mock up what I wanted to etch on the bottom of these bowls, including a template layer I could etch on the scrap board for aligning the bowl rims. From there, I placed my bowl down and let the autofocus on my Thunder Nova 35 do its thing. I love what this type of footage looks like when the camera is on the bed as it lowers, as it looks like a futuristic sci-fi elevator scene descending into some underground city. Then I fired my job which, compared to some materials you etch and cut on the laser, is a bit of a non-event. There's no visible smoke like with wood, there's no obnoxious smell like with acrylic, and there's no flashes of light like with glass. In fact, once the job is done, it may be a little hard to see where the etch is depending on your lighting. But on my way into the house to wash it off, you could make it out in the direct sun. Washing it off. A dry lubricant wouldn't be very useful in industrial applications if it just wanted to flake off super easily from the surface you sprayed it on, so it does have some sticking power. If you rub with something moderately abrasive, like a paper towel, for long enough while running it under water, it will eventually give in and come off, but I've discovered that pumice hand cleaner, i.e. the same stuff you use to get paint off your hand, works great at this task as the tiny little abrasive pumice particles very gently scrape it off the surface. You don't need to apply a ton of force, just gently massage it in with your fingers or a paper towel and then rinse away. And voila, nice dark etch. So because we have half a dozen of the same style bowl, I had a few more to do and was easily able to batch process them all the same way. So if you're etching on metal with a CO2 laser and you don't need the etching to be super dark, I say save the Surmark for those important jobs and just use Molly Lube for everything else. Now the intent of this video was just to show that you can use Molly Lube to etch on metal, 
But in the future, I want to do a one-to-one -one comparison of Surmark to Molly Lube on a variety of surfaces, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that video. But in the meantime, grab yourself a can of dry Molly Lube to use for low-level or silly jobs like this. I'll have a link in the description to the stuff I use. Hey there, Ron from the future here. Obviously things look a little different. I painted my shop. I've been wanting to do it for a while to create a little more visual interest in my videos, to add more contrast between the background and the foreground. Uh, the, the walls were previously just bare plywood, and so when you're working with wood, that doesn't create a lot of contrast on, on video. So I really like how it looks, and hopefully you do too. But I want to take a quick moment at the end of this video to thank my very first Patreon members, David and Keith. I launched my Patreon at the beginning of the month, and those two joined the very first day. And beyond making my day, it gave me a glimmer of hope that I might be able to make this into a full-time thing. So thank you so, so much to those two. And if you'd like to join me over on Patreon as well, there'll be a link in the description as well as at the end of this video. Other than that, while I have you, I'm going to be releasing a couple new project videos in the next few weeks, including a wedding sign for my husband and I. And I haven't done a wedding sign in a while, and this one's going to be really cool. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. Other than that, uh, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.